introduce, uh, this is our park ranger, Travis Delamont, who's going to be doing your virtual photo walk uh, broadcast here today. So well, how are you doing, guys? Woo! Glad to see you. <laughs> Welcome to Hawaii Volcanoes, virtually. Uh, my name is Ranger Travis Delamont. Um, so Jessica asked me to come out and talk to you a little bit about uh, what's going on at out of the crater here and, and kind of what you guys are seeing on the other side of the, the uh, virtual world there. Um, so where we're standing or where I'm standing currently is uh, right on the edge of uh, Kilauea's main caldera, which when you think of a, a plastic model of a volcano, you've got your cone and then there's the hole at the top. So we're, we're basically just inside of the hole at the top. Um, so that's why you guys pay me the big bucks. So I stand inside of one of the most active, one of the most deadly volcanoes <laughs> in the United States of America. Uh, <laughs> and um, just below the floor of the caldera out here, uh, in some places less than a half mile deep, uh, is the main magma chamber of Kilauea that basically feeds all the eruptions that go on on Kilauea. Uh, this is an area roughly twice the size of the island of Oahu. So there's uh, quite a few different places where we could expect an eruption. We just so happen to have uh, an eruption at the summit right now that Jessica is showing you. Uh, this one started back in 2008 uh, with uh, very little warning, um, only a single earthquake and, and some increased gas emissions. We kind of took the clue uh, because we had an eruption or a, uh, an overlook platform out there and we decided to make the closure and about two weeks after the closure of that crater, uh, it locked open and uh, destroyed the overlook with an explosive eruption. Um, at that point, it was pretty violent, but it was a lot smaller. The, the crater itself was really only about 100 feet wide, uh, but the edges have been slowly collapsing in over the last eight years. It's now grown to uh, roughly 855 feet wide. So it's about uh, three times the size of a, of a football stadium. Um, just absolutely huge down there. Um, so today we do actually have some lava splashing up out of the lake, which is a pretty typical thing that it does throughout the day. Right around That's there. awesome. Look at that. Um, the lava lake is constantly pistoning up and down inside of the vent. And as it starts to piston down, it'll release gases along the edge of that lake. And the little splashes that you guys are seeing off in the distance, I mean, you got to keep in mind, we're a mile away from the thing. Some of those splashes are between two to six stories tall. So it's absolutely huge. See that plume, how it's going to the left of the screen? Normally it's going to the right and we have really clear weather, but. Ah. It's really kind of a special time for us up here at the park because uh, for the first seven years of the eruption, we didn't see any lava in the crater at all. The lava lake was always way too far down in the vent to actually get a view of it. Um, but um, over the last uh, eight years now, it's slowly pistoned up and in April of 2015 uh, came into view for about a week and a half. Uh, it actually f overflowed the edge of the crater for a short time. Um, it got kind of crazy up here. <laughs> Not going to lie. Uh, we had about four times our normal visitation during that time. It was a two hour wait to get out to the overlook we're standing at right now. Um, it disappeared then. After, uh, for about a year, we didn't see any lava in there. And then in April, I guess, I guess Pele just really likes April. Uh, April of this year, it actually came up back into view again. It's been pretty consistent since then. Uh, so we've been having some really good views of the crater. The other exciting thing that happens in there, as I was talking about, uh, the edges collapse again. Uh, we have been seeing big chunks of the rim drop into the lava lake. And uh, it's pretty spectacular when that happens. Like, the best way I can describe it is a bit like dropping the Mentos into a soda. You know, you, you got all this rock, sometimes sections as wide as 200 feet wide, dropping down into a lava lake that's heavily gas laden. And when it hits that surface, it, it breaks the surface tension of the lake. And instead of that wispy white plume like we were seeing today, you end up with these mushroom clouds that come up out of the crater. Um, the photograph I'm showing you on camera right now is taken from about three miles away from the eruption. So the, this mushroom cloud here is roughly 5,000 feet high. So absolutely huge. And that's what's caused that crater to, to grow over time. Um, now this is a really interesting period for us up here at Kilauea because, I mean, we've, we've studied this volcano for a long time. It's the longest continuously monitored volcano on the planet. And uh, we've watched it since 1912. And in that span of time, uh, we've seen an average span between eruptions of about two years. So we've seen a lot of eruptions, but we've never seen two eruptions at once. And so this is a really new period for us. We're learning a lot about the way that this volcano works and its plumbing system works. And it's just kind of 
it's one of those exciting moments where we don't know what's coming next. You know? <laughs> but I mean, how you could see the lava billowing there and throwing up and... <laughs> see that? Attractive. And it's another time that I'm really glad that I live uphill from the volcano. So, kind of one of those things. Um, we also have a lava flow going on down at the other vent at Pu'uo'o. So, if we think of the, the structure of Kilauea, um, underneath our summit here, we've got the magma chamber, as I was explaining earlier, which is about the same width as the caldera. It's about three miles wide. And the eruption that we're showing you up here at the summit is really a, kind of a window into the top of that magma chamber. But it doesn't just stay in that magma chamber. From that magma chamber, there's these underground cracks that radiate off the center of the volcano, kind of like spokes on a bicycle wheel. And these are what we would call the rift zones. Uh, generally, they're, they're narrow. You know, these cracks are usually not much more than six inches wide, but they can be between two to five miles deep. And what you got to remember about the way that lava likes to work is lava is lazy. It wants to go where it's easy to go. So if you have that chamber and pressure builds in that chamber and it can escape down the side of the volcano rather than fight gravity to push out the top, it's more likely you're going to end up seeing that lava flow happen down the flank. And so we've got an eruption out on the southeast drift zone of Kilauea uh, at a vent called Pu'uo'o. Um, that guy's been going off since uh, January 3rd of 1983. It's been going on longer than I've lived here. Um, and I was born and raised on the island, so kind of a cool thing. I've lived around in a, a volcanic eruption my whole life. But um, we had a new flow that started up on May 24th that went down to the ocean and was making an ocean entry. And we see it mirrored between the two vents. We see pressure build up here and our lava lake will start to rise and then the lava lake will go through a drop. And that's that pressure moving out to the other vent and pumping out toward the ocean. And so it's all connected in this big system. Get the eruption again for you folks on the, um, on the Zoom. Here with Ranger Travis today, who's telling us about a Kilauea volcano and the summit eruption that you are looking at right now. Yeah, so this is that lava lake that I had been talking about uh, a little earlier. Uh, the dimensions of this lava lake, roughly 855 feet long, about 590 feet wide. So this is big oval that opened up down there. Um, those splashes against the back wall, uh, those are the ones that I was talking about, the spattering events, uh, where we've got lava splashing up between 20 to 60 feet high. Um, so absolutely huge. Um, so this is actually not a very large lava lake for Kilauea. Um, the rest of the crater floor that you can see around that lava lake at various times in history have been lava lakes at over a half mile wide. Um, so this is really kind of a continuation of, of a pretty typical Hawaiian eruption up here. Um, Hawaiian volcanoes are, are really a, a notable thing, and part of the reason they're so studied is because they tend to be fairly mellow like this when they erupt, and you can approach that eruption. So every so often, if you look really closely on the cam where those splashes are coming up, you'll see big slabs of rock getting thrown up with the, with the spatters themselves. Uh, keep in mind those little black patches you see at the base of the spatter, um, those are the size of tour buses. So this is a huge vent that we're looking at down below. How big is that big vent? That big vent about the, about the size of New Orleans Superdome. Whoa. So. Yeah, we're getting some rumbles that we're hearing off the lava lake, and that's, that's pretty special. You can see where the smoke is trailing up the cliff, and that's where the old Overlook platform used to be, at Halemutmo Crater that you could drive out to before 2008. Um, used to be there was, well, there's still a parking lot out there. It's just kind of buried under a big layer of ash and, and Pele's here, which is a kind of fallout that, that comes from the vent. And uh, the Overlook platform itself was partially destroyed when the eruption started off. Uh, we had these boulders that were shot out of, the, out of the vent that were the size of washing machines and landed all over the Overlook platform and, and just destroyed the entire thing. So obvious statement time. We don't, we don't, uh, we don't encourage visitors to go out there anymore. Uh, <laughs> Do you have any questions about all this that I'm talking about? I'm interested in how big that opening is. Um, that opening down there is uh, roughly uh, 590 feet wide, uh, about 855 feet long. And what about the dimensions of Halemau'u uh, and Kilauea? Halemau'u crater, the crater around that little vent is uh, roughly a half mile wide, about 280 feet deep. So that uh, big dark cliff that you can see behind the eruption is the 280 foot wall. Um, the caldera that this all sits in is about a three-mile-wide crater. Uh, so, and we're, uh, 
We're about 425 feet above the floor of the main caldera itself. And we're over at the uh, Jagger Museum at uh, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. This has been the main viewpoint for uh, Halemaumau Summit eruption uh, since it started off in 2008. That opening. And you said that the winds are unusual today, going a different direction than usual. Yeah, typically we have our what we call our trade winds that come in from the northeast, and they would be blowing everything kind of off to the right-hand side of your screen and away from the park, uh, out into the ocean. Uh, today we've got slightly southerly winds, so we've got some of the volcanic fume coming into the park. And uh, if it gets too heavy in some parts of the park, we might end up in evacuating certain areas. Uh, just Has there ever been any precious gems thrown up with that stuff? Uh, we don't typically get any precious gems that come up. Um, one of the things that does come up in our lava flows is a material called olivine, also known as peridot. Um, and that's, that's really the only uh, um, semi-precious stone that we get that forms in our lava rock here. I'm still looking for diamonds, though. I'm not going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering about the Peridot's beautiful. Here. Um, this lava rock is so liquid um, and so hot that there's uh, about a 40-mile-an-hour wind that whips up off the top of that lake. And so what it does is it ends up pulling out these long, thin strands of uh, volcanic glass, uh, what we often refer to as Pele's hair. And it really does look like human hair. Uh, Jessica's out on the hunt for it at the moment. Uh, once we find a good piece, we'll, sh we'll try to get it in focus on the cam here. But constantly being emitted out of the volcano. Oh, yeah, you can totally see it now, Travis. Awesome. Bring it down just a teeny bit. Uh, yeah, Pele's hair right there. That's volcanic glass shards that are ejected out of the volcano. Really indicative of a lava lake, too, because the lava lake is little droplets of lava. Sorry, I got excited and hit the tripod. <laughs> awesome, Travis. That's great. This is Delicious. awesome stuff. No, no, no. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> nice. I love awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try this at home, folks. <laughs> All right, so being carried out in that plume, you can see some parts of the plume are, are a little more. Uh, oh, uh, we got a question. Is it silica, the strands? Yes. Um, it's uh, roughly 40% glass uh, that makes up that Pele's hair. Um, so that's a big part of the composition of it. But it's essentially the same composition as the rest of the lava rock here. So it contains iron and uh, magnesium and uh, silica, and, uh, just a whole whole slew of things, even a little bit of titanium in there. But some of the other stuff getting carried out by this plume is also volcanic ash and that sulfur dioxide gas that I was we had been talking about earlier on. So it's one of those uh, big hazards with the eruption is uh, we're looking at between three to 7,000 metric tons of sulfur dioxide coming out of there a day. Um, and breathing that stuff turns into sulfuric acid in your lungs. So uh, makes it rough to get, it, get a view from too close. Isn't there a, a goddess or something associated with this volcano? It certainly is. Uh, what you're looking at is the home of Pele Aihonua, the, the, the god, Hawaiian goddess of volcanoes. Uh, she's said to live in Halemaumau Crater. Um, and depending on how you say the name of the crater, uh, Hale Ma'uma'u translates to the house of the Ama'u fern. It talks about a fight that Pele had with her, her husband, the pig god. Um, or the other way to say it is Hale Ma'uma'u, the house of everlasting fire, which as you can see from the video today is a pretty accurate description of what we're looking at. Um, so really a, a lot of culture um, uh, centered around this crater that you're looking at. And before 2008, when you were able to go out to the Overlook uh, safely, it was a really common thing that you would see offerings to Pele left all around the edge of the crater. and People would be uh, performing hula as an offering to Pele. Um, so really a, a beautiful sight down here. If you look closely at the wall of the crater behind the vent, you can see about halfway down the wall, there's sort of a horizontal line left in the wall. Um, and this is what we would call a bathtub ring. And that was the level of a lava lake that was in the crater in uh, 1967 and 1968. Um, and it stayed there for a couple of years. And then the floor of the crater that you can see down below it was a lava lake there in 1974 that ended up solidifying in place. It ended up creating a, a, uh, a new floor on the crater. Just um, kind of our thought as to, to what Halemaumau is, is most likely it's, it's sort of the thinnest part of the crust above that magma chamber. Um, so you're basically looking at a window into the top of the magma chamber. 
And that magma chamber stands about five miles tall. And the magma that's feeding into this chamber originates roughly 900 miles deep in the planet. So we're, we're getting a, a almost literal window into the center of the Earth is what we're seeing right now. Yeah, and that entire silver surface that you're seeing right now is all molten. And so it, it forms this silver crust over the top of it, and that's all really pliable. And if you look, if you get a really good scope and look really closely, a lot of times you can see waves sloshing across underneath the, the crust. What temperatures are these? Uh, the lava lake itself is roughly 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, if you were to be standing right on the edge of that, that pit, um, you're looking at ambient air temperatures, probably about four to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So um, having stood right next to active flows myself, um, even a small, very slow moving sluggish lava flow, the best way I can describe the heat that comes off of it, it's a, it's a bit like preheating an oven to 600 degrees and opening the door right in your face. Yeah. It's just this incredible heat that comes off of it. So it's sort of a funny thing about working up here. People will ask us, how are they know if they're on fresh lava, they're going to break through the surface? It's like, well, I mean, the heat is so intense coming off of it. I, you really don't want to be standing on it. You, it's Lava is a beautiful kind of a self-governing thing. <laughs> we really appreciate everybody who's uh, joining us on virtual photo walks. This has been a really fun year for us during our uh, 100th anniversary to reach out to new audiences and especially to those of you who, who can't make it to parks um, because of illness or disability or whatever reason. It's, it's wonderful that we have this opportunity to share Hawaii Volcanoes National Park with you and this active eruption. So thank you so much for joining us today and a huge thanks to uh, Ranger Travis and to Sammy, our Centennial intern who is actually filming this for you all so she thank can send you. that to John. <laughs> You're on candid camera, folks. And thank, uh, you. thank you to uh, Pele Honuamea, our volcano goddess, who is definitely putting on quite a show for you this morning. Yeah, thank you for joining us, folks. It's been an absolute honor to talk to you. Thank Bye. you all. Bye-bye. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> since it has started off in 2008. That opening down there is uh, roughly uh, 590 feet wide, uh, about 855 feet long. Halima'u crater, the crater around that little vent is uh, roughly a half mile wide, about 280 feet deep. So that uh, big dark cliff that you can see behind the eruption is the 280 foot wall.